Originally from Ashdod, Yisrael, Ohad El Chelo is entering his third year of studies at Brandeis University as the recipient of the prestigious Slivka Scholarship. Following a four and a half year service in the IDF as a combat intelligence officer, Ohad is now a reserve officer who recently <coughs> left Boston in order to participate in Operation Protective Edge. And may I say as he comes forward that we are all profoundly grateful both for his service and to see him back safely in Boston. Thank you. I'm very glad to be here today. While I'm only 24, I've already been involved in three operations in Gaza. During the most recent operation, two of my friends were killed. I would like to begin by sharing three observations I gained from my service as an officer in the IDF, particularly throughout the last operation in Gaza from which I've just returned. The first observation is taught to every combat soldier of the IDF. The battlefield is a breeding ground for our sentinel. There is no, and there could not be, a manual that provides us with each of the different scenarios in which the enemy will test our morality. One example I personally witnessed was of a terrorist who launched a rocket and ran into an ambulance, using it to escape from the scene. No, there was no set protocol of how to respond to such a scenario. And no, of course, we did not shoot the ambulance. <laughs> Second, we have our best men and women in uniform making sure we keep the highest possible standards of ethics. I can assure you that the IDF was is and will always be moral. My third observation is that many innocent people died in Gaza. With the way Hamas conducted itself, it was impossible to avoid civilian casualties. I know that we did not target civilians, and I know that Hamas terrorists chose to hide in schools and hospitals forcing 18-year-old Israeli soldiers to make the hardest decisions possible. And no other army would have done a better job. My friends and I, my friends and I maintain the highest moral standards, not out of fear of the international community, but because this is what we were taught at home and in school, that every life is precious. I refuse to believe, I refuse to believe there is a Jewish heart that was not broken for the death of each Palestinian child. But my friend and I also know this. A child who saw his house demolished at the age of five is not likely to grow up to be a peace activist. Every round of violence in Gaza weakens the moderates and empowers extremism. We say that Hamas is the man responsible for the death of the innocent Gazans, and we are right. We say, we say broke all truces, and we are right. We say Hamas does not want peace, and we are right. But being right is not enough. To succeed and to thrive, we must be smart. Prime Minister Netanyahu always says that the terrorist infrastructure must be eliminated and it could not be more right. But the terrorist infrastructure is not only Hamas. It is also poverty, ignorance, desperation, hopelessness, and the lack of political horizon. <laughs> Addressing these factors is not a job of the IDF. It is up to us, Jews, 
Arabs, Americans, all of us to build new infrastructure of hope. There is an old phrase that has resonated with me lately. I would rather have a thousand mothers cry rather than my mother. Well, I would like to add my own piece to the same. If a thousand mothers cry today, my mother is much more likely to cry tomorrow. And if not for me, then for my brother. And if not for him, then for my children. As a citizen of Israel, as a Jew, as a soldier, and as a citizen of the world, I will do all that is in my power to prevent mothers, Israeli and Palestinian alike, from crying. I assure you, I assure you, the IDF will beat terror every time it rears its head. But terror can only be eliminated if we, Israelis, Palestinians, Americans, lay down the infrastructure of hope together. Thank you very much.